Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Katherine Weber, and as the Lending Services Librarian of the Lewiston Public Library, I would like to welcome you all to the Great Pulse Forum. <laughs> the forum is a monthly speaker series featuring leaders in the area of business, public policy, academia, and the arts, and is a partnership with Bates College, The Sun Journal, and the Lewiston Public Library. This year marks our 26th season of the Great Falls Forum, so we thank you for your support and ensuring the program's continued success. Today's program is also streaming live via Zoom and Facebook, and a recording will be available after on the library's YouTube page. Please visit lplonline.org for more information. And also mark your calendars for our next Great Falls Forum on January 18th. More information on that will be available soon. Uh, at the conclusion of today's program, there will be an opportunity for audience questions. Those in the room are welcome to, of course, raise your hands. And those joining us virtually can enter your questions using the Q&A feature on Zoom or comment on Facebook, and we'll read these aloud to our speaker. And now I have the pleasure of introducing today's featured speaker, Ryan Eldridge. Ryan Eldridge became a carpenter by chance. In his early 20s, Ryan found himself traveling from the mountains in the winter to the oceans in the summer, following seasonal employment opportunities. His inability to sit still and his desire for more stability led him on the path to the job site. Over time, he discovered his love of carpentry, the physical labor involved with pounding nails, and the creative outlet he gets when building things. When not filming a new season for the hit TV show, Maine Cabin Masters, Ryan enjoys spending time on the beautiful lakes of Maine, with family and friends, traveling to see his favorite musicians, and working amongst his staff at their growing businesses, the Kennebec Cabin Company retail store, and the Woodshed restaurant, bar, and event venue. Please join me in welcoming Ryan to Lewiston. Thank you, Catherine. Well, thank you, everybody, for having me today. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of you know speaking as the show gets more popular, and it gets easier every time. Um, and it's almost like, I feel like I'm making my mom proud of my dad, you know, actually using my college degree a little bit. <laughs> so this is a good thing. Um, I'm from Gardner, Maine. I graduated in uh, 1993. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but, you know, moved all around and uh, found myself back in West Gardner, Maine. You know, as life got, got on and, you know, happy as I could ever be now. So, you know, thanks again for, for, for having me. Um, and I just... It's hard to come up here and talk about our success and all the great things we've done and not, you know, just say something about, you know, the recent events, you know, um, as we talk about our show and everything, it's all, it's the biggest part is being a Mainer, you know, and the pride we have from here and who we are, you know, and I know it hit us all hard, hard. We had the pride that it's never going to happen here and we are, and it did, you know, and since then, hearing the stories of courage and selflessness and just the amazing things Mainers have done, it made me more proud to be a Mainer than ever before, you know, in the light of all that darkness, you know. So let's take a moment of silence just in honor of them. And You know, I read today that um, get the Gavin's coming back. He got released from the hospital. So that's great news, you know. So things are moving forward. That darkness is going to give, you know. We're Mainers and we're tough and we're strong and we're going to do, we're going to get there. Um, but yeah, so I was got online last night, the website, and I saw it says preserving Maine history, one rustic cabin at a time. And I thought I was talking about, um, you know, how the show has influenced us, how it helped our community and stuff. So I'll try to get a little history in there as well. Um, and I'll try to stay on track if I can. Um, but yeah, as you guys probably know, uh, Maine Cabin Masters has been going on for, it's our ninth build season and it's been so busy and stuff. I, we kind of lost track of, you know, what season is on TV because there's these um, greatest hits episodes, uh, best of episodes. So we just know we've been doing it for nine summers. So, and it's, it's been amazing. And I got to introduce Jen Reese. Jen is our Jen's uh, one of my best friends from twenty plus years. Our business development um, manager, my handler, keeps me focused. Tells me um, 
when I got stuff to do, does my Google calendar and all that stuff. So yeah, she keeps me in line. Um, but yeah, so cat, main cat masters started out as just a, you know, a dream, an idea that we thought it was going to be one pilot. And now we're on the Magnolia network and one of the most popular shows on there. And it just keeps getting busier and busier and more popular. So it's, it's amazing. Um, and again, it's because of all our support from people like you and people all over the world, really. So it's a uh, power of TV is, is something really amazing. Um, Jen's going to um, show us a short little video. And then we're going to go from there. We have two assistants today. This is the best demo ever. Best demo <laughs> ever. Don't get used to it. Beautiful rainy day, Chase. It's only fitting for the camp we're going to see. Got destroyed in a microburst earlier this spring. It's devastating. We'll redo that. There we go. This is the best demo ever. Best demo <laughs> ever. Don't get used to it. Beautiful rainy day, Chase. Only fitting for the camp we're going to see. Got destroyed in a microburst earlier this spring. It's devastating that it's in this condition. Really happy that the main cabin masters are going to rebuild it for us. It's kind of nice up here. <laughs> <laughs> cabin can mean so many different things to so many different people. Welcome to Burgundar. We're about to get medieval up in this bad boy. <laughs> There's more to Maine than just summer camps on the coast. Grant has a little sister. Her name is Carly. She has a rare genetic disorder called Pura Syndrome. This is absolutely one of her favorite places in the world. You realize just how special of a place it is, and we're pretty honored to be working in this area. I really love being able to go out and work with people that are so talented and make these beautiful pieces. We're going to have a great time with this. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! 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 Oh, what is that? Can we put him off a little bit longer so we can just sit here and enjoy this? Oh, oh my. Oh, I never could have done this. Great job. This is going to be fun. Fun thing. Yeah. We'll get creative on this one. Put it up, Chase. Put up the flag. Camp is open. Well, as you can see, we have a lot of fun. And as you can see how beautiful our state is, and the amazing relationships we've ma made with people. This is the best demo. That's what this is the best demo. Again, if you want. Um, but you know, our story is, is a really good story, you know, because it happened later in life, you know, and it happened by chance. And, you know, it's a good lesson that don't give up, you know, life has ups and downs and, you know, you don't know where you have, you have a path you think and where you end up, you know, like, it's 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 funny. Like I should do that every night because when I go to bed at night, I have I'm going to go to this job site, this job site, that job site, and what actually happens is never as I plan. So I wish I would have started writing that down a long time ago. But um, so yeah, so this whole story started, um, you know, probably 15 years ago. Um, Ashley was friends of friends, and um, her and I, you know, became better friends, started dating. And um, next thing you know, it's getting kind of serious. And I met her brother and her family. And at that time, I had um, moved back home. I was living out west and traveling a lot and uh, moved back home. And Dixie came back home. And then Jedi came back from Breckenridge. So the three of us were doing, uh, like, decks and garages. And we thought we had it figured out, you know. No subs. You know, no electrical, no plumbing. Just do that and go skiing in the winter. And... Um, Chase had always been working with, you know, his dad and other people, you know, just saving stuff and, you know, making something out of nothing. And, you know, that, that really old main ingenuity. Does that mean talk? What? Oh, you know, uh, you know, just the, like, like I said, like saving stuff and making something out of nothing, repurposing, recycling, upcycling, cross cycling, side cycling, you know, that moral family can never throw anything away. And what's funny is when we first started, I was, that was not my building style. You know, I was like, I wanted all the new stuff. I want my lawn perfect. And I fought it for a while, but it, it took me about 
I mean, it took me a year or two, you know, um, to, to see it and to see how amazing the, their side of the brain works. You know, I'm the opposite side. They have the artists, the craftsmen, musicians in their family. And it, it's really neat. And then on the, I got the other side. Like, you give me the plans, I'll round up the troops. I'll do all the logistics. I'll get it done. So we all, we're, you know, we're, we're a good team. Seems like our strengths and weaknesses are a perfect balance. Uh, and I'll never forget this day. It was 2014, which was kind of like the last real good winter we had, I think, in central Maine. And it was so cold that, you know, we had about eight layers on. We looked like Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Could you know how they bend over? And I remember we were building the hybrid timber frame in Wayne, Maine. And we had uh, put a door on it. And, you know, in the winter, it's tough to work. It's always tough to go in for a warm lunch and come back to the job site. That's the hardest thing. So we were uh, – had a crock pot and every day we're like okay one today's dixie's day next day's jedi's day so we have a crock pot cook off every day and we were getting fancy i mean uh, we were putting like biscuits on top and and like have, having a lot of fun with it but i remember a couple of those days we had to, ha- to take layers of clothes off just to get to cook and uh we also came up with a great idea you know on your ease how they have the melting wire well moisture and guns when it's cold doesn't go real. so we ran, wrapped all our guns in that and um we were having fun. You know, we were, we're all bearded up and having a good time. Chase comes in one day. He's like, you guys want to be on TV? Or like, we probably said some not suitable words for here. Like, sure, yeah, whatever. And like, we're going to go do a Skype interview. Well, we didn't even know what a Skype interview was. But I remember going in, you know, we left in the afternoon, going in and getting online. And the Skype interview, someone in Colorado, you know, production company. Um, we started talking to her and they had this idea. Um, we want a group of builders in Maine and a group of builders in Alaska. You know, Alaska has been on TV. And, you know, Alaska is so much like Maine, but Alaska had been in the, in the limelight. You know, shows were coming from there. It was very popular. Well, they wanted to kind of tap into Maine and have a group of builders in Maine and then a group of builders in Alaska. And the premise of that show was to, you know, fight our way into the backwoods, find these old camps and fix them up. And it was called Lost Cabin Hunters. So we did a pilot for that, for that show. And I remember like going through all the logistics and talking to them. And I'll never forget leaving, you know, I live in Farmingdale, Maine at the time, getting in the trucks to a five, five, six truck convoy. And I kind of thought we were getting punked. We didn't know. We only talked to these people online. And I'll never forget, we were up in Bangor and uh, Chase comes out of the hotel wide eyed and he's like, oh, this is for real. Uh, he's like, there's cameras everywhere. And like, Looking back on it, I, those people are crazy because we went to the Allagash in last week of February. We, you know, you guys know how remote that is. And uh, they dared to come with us. We had to actually call and have, um, give permission to have a skitters plow the way in. So we, we went up there for three weeks straight with a production company, people we just met. Um, we were all staying in this one little cabin. Well, it wasn't a little cabin. We all stayed in one cabin, you know, sleeping like cordwood or in a row. And uh, there's an old camp up there on Nine Mile Bridge. Um, Camille Bolia, he was an old trapper and it's pr- pretty neat. And like, again, the history, you know, of Maine, like we all know Maine history and, but just here getting all the history from these little regionals of stuff. And like, this show has just taught me how I always love Maine, but how even diverse it is and how, how we, there's little hamlets and areas that are so different, you know? And like, so we're up there and the hunting and trapping, we find he has this old cabin. So we're there for three weeks and we're like, this is the best thing ever. We're filming a pilot. Never, ever did we expect it to be more than that. You know, I think they paid us 25 bucks an hour around the clock. We're like, this is heaven. And there's a cook there. It's like, oh, well, that was awesome. Um, so we, we do that. And um, we, so we do, we do three weeks and we leave and we go back in, um, in the spring, three weeks later to finish up. And we're up again, we're up there and these, you know, everyone, these people from all over the world, the, like what's neat with the cameras and TV is a lot of them reunion, but the production company is always the same, but the um, drone pilot, the audio guy, they're all freelancers and they work on different shows and you know, their schedules, that's the one hard thing about TV is your schedule changes. And I don't, couldn't tell you what I'm doing next month. You know, I was just talking to Kath about how lucky I am this worked out because we have so much going on. And like, I can get a call and say, you're somewhere else. But um, to see all these people come in from all around the world 
and they, they've been everywhere. And to see them react to the beauty of Maine, and you know, everyone has preconceived misconceptions about you know Maine. Is all of us like they couldn't believe I had Tyre and West Guard on the internet. You know, it's like, <laughs> and we're bringing them way up north. But you know, we we left there with new friends and uh, just an amazing time. And we fixed up this cabin and, you know, brought back some history and we learned a lot, you know, and uh, looking back, thank God they didn't pick that show up because it would have been a lot, you know, and it wouldn't have lasted, you know, with cabin masters, we've really found a niche. I mean, everyone knows someone that has a camp or a cabin. And I think right now we have, uh, I think 4,000 applications. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, we, we could have a hundred crews going, wouldn't get it done. Uh, so we, you know, so we, we left that, and about two or three months later, like, oh, we're not gonna pick the show up. Like, that was fine. You know, we had fun. We could say we did that, and we we, we go back to work. And about maybe a month or two later, like, we want to try something else. We love you guys. We love your personality, your camaraderie, and of course, we love the great state of Maine. So we did a pilot, and that was the um, Weber cabin on Vassalboro Pond, and. Another just a reason the show works, you know, it, because of Maine, because, you know, this, they was a seven degree separation. I think in Maine is probably like two or three degrees. And, you know, th there's some, I think, you know, people are upset. Someone's helping us. Like Ashley's dad passed away right before um, the show really got picked up. And he's really the main driving force between Chase and Ashley's creativity and their need to save everything. Um, so I think he helps us out. Someone is helping us out because we, we're very, very lucky. But they called us up, like, let's do another cabin. And it was the, um, like I said, it was, um, I don't have a brain cramp. Daggett. It was a Daggett camp. And the Daggett family and the Morrill family have known each other for a long time. Bev Daggett was a uh, senator or a representative from Augusta. And sorry, I can't sit still with that microphone. Uh, so we go do that. And I remember that morning, it was like October. And we get, Again, we didn't think it was going to take off. So we get contracts on a truck, 6 a.m., sign it. In hindsight, five years later, that was the worst thing we could have done. But, <laughs> uh, you know, so we, so we do that pilot and um, have a great time. And the way the pilot works, I think, like, say you, say you bring 100 ideas to a TV, to production companies, they might take 10 to make it a pilot. And then I've, you say you take 100 pilots, one or two might get a um, first season. You know, getting that traction is really the is the hardest thing, you know. And that first year, you know, we we begged, stole, borrowed to get 10 camps. You know, you know, we had all we could do. And um, looking back on back then it was just the five of us and a couple of the guys. The fact that we made it, you know, as far as we have is uh just a, t a testament to, you know, hard work, the niche we found in Maine, a little bit of luck, you know, and all that thrown in. But um, it really took a lot of just grassroots because at first no one knew who we were, you know, it's, and it's hard to call someone, hey, can we have the keys to your camp and don't come back till it's done? You know, um, I, I, I don't know if I can do that to my own house, you know, but now that we have a reputation, it's very easy. But to get to that point, it was, it was tough. Um, it's funny now because the building part is so easy, you know, and I'm so proud of, we got teammates and crew members that, you know, could barely read a tape measure who now can fix sills and do this and do that. So it's, it's great. It's the other stuff now that's get, it's harder, like managing time and events and, you know, all this obligation, that obligation. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, do, we're doing it and we're having a lot more fun. Uh, and it, it has gotten a lot easier. Like after like we were on DIY network for, I believe, four years. Every year there, it was, are we going to get another season? And that was hard because... You know, builders in Maine, you know, you work so much your go time. You, you hope to have a foundation, you know, in and a house shelled up so you can work on that. In the winter, you don't work outside. Well, we really screwed that up. <laughs> but I like to say, you know, the, the worst of TV, that's to me, the worst of weather, the better the TV. Uh, so, you know, we worked a lot outside a lot. You know, it took us probably four or five years to get into a groove, and we knew we were going to have one or two seasons, and, you know, we, we could get, we could, you know, didn't have to worry about that. We could really focus on the show. Um, since then, we got on the Magnolia channel, and that really, you know, changed everything. Um, you know, I'd I liken it to we started out like at the Portland Sea Dogs AAA, 
you know, we maybe got up to double A there and then Magnolia brought us up to the big leagues. So it's been, it's been really amazing. The support we've had from them and the reach. Um, and we're not Magnolias, you know, we're more like dandelions. <laughs> I think it, it's a great, we're, we're a great fit for them. They're, Cause it's all about telling stories, you know, um, everyone has an amazing story and, you know, I think we, we, and, you know, represent the state of Maine and, and how, you know, people, I think the people love the show because they're like, Oh, we, you like my neighbor. We know someone like you, you like my brother-in-law or like, you know, and I think that's what it's about being, being a Maine. And I think because our show is not scripted either, because what you see is what you get. Like we literally, if we watch the show, we don't know the storylines or how it's going to play out. And uh, what's amazing is for each episode, I believe it's 40, 42 minutes of TV and there's seven acts. And to see how they pick out the storyline is just amazing. There's over 100 hours of footage for each camp. Like I, I have a theory in my mind that they could go back and do a whole different episode with all the footage and follow. Because sometimes we'll be like, we did this amazing thing and we did that and it doesn't make the show. You know, but they, they had, they're, they're the creative side. We'll let them, you know, do their thing. Um, you know, and as, as we got more traction through the, um, through our audience and, you know, through social media and outlets like that, I'm a guy like, because we really struggled with um, negotiating. We don't know anything about TV. You know, we're builders, you know. And as you see, when I get to uh, get all of our background, how we got together, you know, it's like, we're, we're, we're just carpenters. Some of us have teaching degrees. Some of us, you know, have this art degree. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a struggle, but, you know, again, the more support we've gotten from everyone, it's made it a lot easier. Um, and again, I just can't stress, you know, how important being from, from Maine and having the show based in Maine has been. And I, to me, it's the most important reason the show is the way it's popular as it is. So back to that idea about having us in Maine working and some people in Alaska, it didn't really work, you know, quite work out. And they tried to do this, the same idea in Minnesota. You know, there's so many places, so many beautiful places in our country and in the world, you know, uh, but like upstate New York is it, we can follow the demographics where like, uh, we really got a lot of fans and it's places that are a lot like here, uh, the Finger Lakes, upstate New York, 10,000 lakes in Minnesota and that area. Um, you know, out west in Oregon, but it just for some reason it hasn't really clicked with anyone else. And I and I do think it's because our our camaraderie, because of that main way, you know, because sticking together and having to save stuff, you, you know, like having to take something from nothing, you know, and being frugal, you know, and doing that thing. So yeah, it's like we can't we can't thank you know the fact that we're we're from Maine and and the influence that has on the show. Um, I'm going to play a little thing about our uh, backgrounds and like uh, how it all started. I try to keep on track and not bounce around, but <laughs> good thing I'm not doing the, AV, the audio visual stuff. That was from Hammond Lumber's yard in Belgrade. We did a fun photo shoot out there last year. It's been, it's, it's really amazing the, uh, the things we've seen. You know, when the, the first couple of years of the show, before we got into more, like the way that the line they wanted, we got to go to so many cool places. We visited lumber yards from Dewey's Lumber over, you know, the side of Augusta, which is two people and cedar logs to Robin's Lumber, you know, down in Searsmont, which is just the technology of Robin's Lumber is amazing. And just seeing all the craftsmanship from this state and the technology, you know, like we don't get a lot of credit being in Maine, you know, but Maine is on the forefront of a lot of amazing things. You know, the stuff they're doing at UMaine r and with, with the, you know, the forestry program and printing houses and boats, boats. It's, 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 it's amazing. And it's great that we can help, um, you know, get this out there, show the world, how amazing we are. So uh, I grew up in Augusta. I went to Coney High School, graduated in 1996, 
and then went on to college in Bar Harbor at College of the Atlantic. I was there four years. I got my liberal arts degree from there. After college, moved out west and was a ski bum for a little while. And I bought a house prior to that. Had to move home, finish renovations on that, and then kind of just fell back into renovation and carpentry and did that for quite a while. The opportunity for the show kind of presented itself. We, you know, I was working with Jedi Dixie Ryan and a couple other people on a building in Wayne. Again, the opportunity was there. Talked to the production team. We thought we'd do one cabin, have fun stories to tell. And here we are now going into season eight. I've got four kids. Youngest is 11 years old. Oldest is 16. Um, yeah, married for 15 plus years and live in Wayne, Maine. So I grew up in Augusta. I am Ashley from Maine Cabin Masters. I do all the design work on the show. Um, I grew up in Augusta, Maine. I went to Coney High School. Um, after graduating high school, I took a couple of years off. Um, eventually went back to college. Um, I went to UMO for a little while and then ended my degree at um, University of Southern Maine. I studied graphic design and media studies. Um, after college, I moved out west and became a ski bomb. I stayed out there for about five years in Crested View, Colorado. Uh, had the best time. I highly recommend getting out, traveling, um, exploring, seeing the country, seeing the world. Um, but then I found my way back home to um, the Augusta area. Um, at that point, um, my sister-in-law and I purchased a little uh, home goods store in downtown Hollowell. Um, it's called the Potluck Shop, and we sold um, handmade furniture that Chase, my dad, that my brother and my father made, um, and then also just like antiques and home goods. Um, and then from there, that's kind of how I grew into um, my love of design um, with my design background and then the home goods store. It kind of all just evolved into um, this TV show. I am My name is Ryan Eldridge. Yeah, Central Maine is just like coming alive and young people are staying there now, which is awesome. And there's new restaurants, they're getting the theater going again. So it's, it's been great to be a part of that and to see all the energy come back. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get this all in 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, one of the things um, we've really seen grown is the opportunities that we've been able to provide and how the trades have changed a lot. Um, you know, when we first started this, even the last 10 years, the trades have changed so much. Carpenters and plumbers and electricians, they're finally getting, you know, recognized and paid, you know, what they deserve. You know, they can make a living. Um, you know, some of it has to do with the, the pandemic, but I think a lot of it just has to do with, you know, again, people are seeing the quality of craftsmanship here and, um, you know, and the main is hard work and their work ethic, you know, and their ability to just get the job done. Um, it's, over time, you know, we started the show out, these small businesses we worked with. Um, I remember I started out with Tom from Main the Handrails, does all our amazing metal work. And I remember talking to him like season one or two. It's like, you know, want to do a trade out? Like, in that, a trade out is where, you know, they provide a service and they get free advertising. And I mean, I remember when Tom said, I was a couple thousand dollars. I'm like, you know, Tom, I, I think you should do it. And I never, th I was thinking about the one episode when they play it and come to find out they play the episodes all the time. So he can tell me, text me like, oh, my episode's on because his orders are coming in his computer, his, his emails are stacking up, the phone's ringing. Um, 
which, which is just awesome to see, you know, to see his business grow. He was the first. And then to see all these other um, people we worked with, these artists and craftsmen and people from Central Maine, like, oh, my, you know, my rentals are all busy. Our restaurant's doing great. And then to see what it's provided us, you know, to be able to, I never thought I could say, you know, we have 25 carpenters. We pay them a, a good rate. We have, they have a 401k, re, you know, retirement and health insurance. I mean, that's, I think I lived 20 years of my life without health insurance. Go into that back when I was skiing every day. It's like, you look back, like, how dumb was that? <laughs> <laughs> but that's behind us. Uh, you know, and now we have, we've created Kennebec Cabin Company, you know, which is a retail store. And we have so many fabulous employees there. And we get to showcase, you know, local artists and craftsmen. And, you know, we bought the, back to the Daggett family, that serendipitous things. We ended up buying their home, their homestead in Manchester, right on 202. And again, someone's helping us. We were looking around for a space for a long time. We wanted to play a place where my nieces and nephews could work safely. And, you know, and we were going to get the old Slate's building. I don't know if you remember Slate's restaurant burned and it had been empty. That's all we could really find. Chase had the lease in his truck drive through Manchester and there's um, Mr. Daggett and Earl Kenny from the realtor walking out, Chase pulled right in like, don't put that stake in the, don't put that in the ground yet. You know, and you know, five years later uh, with some help from the Daggett's like we, we want that property. And it's amazing to see that property grow and to see people from all over the world come there. Like, you know, we bought that, that. we thought, you know, locals and, you know, we opened the woodshed up. Um, I've always worked for restaurants, worked for the shipyard for a long time when I was building and um, never thought the big scale, but it's people are coming up that way now to get to Bar Harbor, you know, and it, it's just amazing to see and to see the, hear the stories from our bartenders and our retail employees about people coming to, to Maine and just loving it and, you know, just coming back, you know, Maine's that place that you come once, you're going to, you're going to keep coming back, it, you know, it's drawing them in. And then, um, you know, from there, I think we might have 50 or 60 employees, 50 employees in the summer. You know, it, it truly takes a village to run, to run our world. And again, another important aspect of being Maine is family run businesses, you know, and having family involved and all these small businesses we work with families right there. Um, we wouldn't be where we are today without our family, you know, whether it's, you know, my dad running around, uh, helping us out, watching. We, we have four-legged kids. We don't have regular kids, but watching our dogs, you know, or, or Chase's kids helping us out, uh, mother-in-laws, in-laws. So, you know, it, it, it truly has taken a lot. And uh, just to see the pride that everyone has in that, it's just, it's awesome. Um, but, you know, as this, as this thing get, keeps getting bigger and bigger now, it's like we were trying to, our biggest worry was how to fix a sill. You know, now it's like managing time because – we, before we, we just got another property in Monmouth, we're bringing a lumber yard back to life, Noel's Lumber, which has been amazing. And it's been more amazing, I think, for Chase and I's, you know, and our copper is, you know, peace of mind. Because if we forgot something at our regular headquarters in July, it could take two or three hours to get, to get through it, you know? Um, I like to talk, as you know. And uh, I feel like we got to, everyone that comes there, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without them. So we can get caught up there for hours. You know, someone's waiting for a skill saw. It does. It's not very good on the budget. <laughs> so we were lucky, you know, get, getting this new property in Monmouth um, has been really great for us. And we provided more jobs. And we, we just, I think last night's episode, two night, last episode was our brand new workshop, um, working with the Powermatic, a big company. And, you know, building a workshop that all our guys can come in after work and, you know, create stuff and build stuff. And it's uh, been neat been really neat and just to see the power of these relationships because we fought social media for a long time uh we i don't think we got on instagram until year four and jen was not happy about that but it's it's hard to to realize the value of this stuff like we can just post and people want to work with us so you know jen's really helped us you know reaching that because it's hard to ask for something but we didn't realize the value of what they're getting from working with us. So we've been able to use that tool as well, to, you know, to get a new wood shop, to maybe try out tools we've never tried. And uh, it's been, it's been fun, you know, but it's taken a lot. Chase and I, we couldn't have done that ourselves. So I mean, we built a team. I remember we started out, we finally got a, uh, you know, office manager bookkeeper. And I think we always, the main way we always went as far as we could without bringing on that extra, 
you know, it's hard. You know, it's like getting to that point where, you know, you always work on your house and like you do it yourself. Like, so I tell our young employees equity, you know, in your home, like you might not be getting paid for it, but you're building, you're getting to get paid someday and get to that point where like, you could, I might want to pay someone else to that. So I can focus on our thing, you know, it's, it's hard to do. So we got, we got a big team helping us out with that. Um, and, you know, to watch some of these kids that we brought up and these guys on our team grow has been amazing over eight years. You know, we have the summer kids. We have my nephew, um, this kid, Schmitty. Schmitty um, started with us like six or seven years ago. He's from Miranda Cook, and it was a, um, a, what was it, career day. You know, so the police officers come in, in the police car, the firemen's come in the fire truck. And poor little Smitty one is going to go with the carpenter. So, you know, you figure Chase would come in the big work truck. No. Nope. Chase pulls into the minivan with red Crocs on. <laughs> and, and, and Smitty, God love him, he, he came in with a smile. And he, he, to watch him, I think he's at UMA Order now. He's got his degree. But he, to see some of these kids come in, it's not just a summer job. My nephew Corbin, his summer job. God love him, you know, but he's a big help, but he's doing his thing. But Schmitty's coming in, he kind of got that spark, you know, which is really cool to see, you know, especially with the trades being the way they are. Um, Brad's been with us for such a long time, and he was at Hudson College, like, I want to I get done college, just where if you're like, no. Like, if you get done school, sorry, but we're not going to support that. But go get your degree, come back, you know, and you're going to get a raise. And um, he did that, and he's still with us today. Uh, you know, Jay, we call him Canadian Jay. He was a teacher for 25 years, needed a change. And, and um, he's with us now. So it's, it's been really great to see, you know, people come from us from different backgrounds and to see people, you know, develop their skills and um, to go on from there. And it's, it's scary and fun to see what's going to happen in the next four or five years. Um, I guess time will tell. You know, we're so busy right now that it's hard to stop and, like, we're going to make ourselves take a deep breath. Like, wow, look at, look at what we've created. And like, you know, to take it all in, but you know, you got to make it with the sun shine and the TV doesn't last forever. So that there's a fine line to that. So we're going to, we, we got, we signed a contract, hopefully, you know, four more years and we'll see how this is going. If I had my way, maybe we can walk off in the sunset and some other young kids could come up and take it out because crawling under these cabins isn't getting any fun as you get older. And I need readers now, too, for some of my uh, tape measures. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Uh, I think we're going to open up to a question and answer for a little while. And uh, we'll go from there. We got questions already. You okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you ask the uh, customer or whatever, how much money do you have to contribute? Yeah. When they say $25, he says, they're crazy. They can't do that for $25. How did I know that was going to be the first question? That's what I say. Yeah, go, go. No. That's a great question. Um, that's a great question. And that dollar amount you see is the dollar amount that the homeowner puts in. You know, in the first couple seasons, it was, it was, uh, it was amazing to see because, so that's a lot of money to some people, you know, and oh, yeah. And but I guess what I'm trying to say is to see those, but the smaller budgets, we, I love those because a family would put in, they'd all scrape together five or $6,000 a piece, you know, cause these can't cabins have so many cousins and uncles and relatives and to see their reaction. Cause this is something they never would have got to do. was amazing. You know, as the pandemic changed prices, as we've gotten more popular, the budgets have gone up, but we definitely like those smaller budgets. And the way, the reason that um, that does seem small to you, because we have trade outs and we don't mark anything up. So if we go to Hammond Lumber and it's $2,500, you know, mo most contractors, and it, it's standard practice, you're going to mark it up a little bit for your time. But because we um, get a fee to be on TV, um, that helps us out. So we, it's direct cost from what we pay to what the homeowner pays. Um, even, even labor, you know, uh, say you pay some guy $20, but then you got to pay MEMIC, you got to pay unemployment. Uh, we were able to just to pass that on just the, the, the base rate. So, we're, you know, having the production company involved really helps out. And you wouldn't believe, uh, like Chase and Ashley, how they repurpose, you know, that save money. 
Like first, it's fun. The first couple of seasons you'd watch and you could say, Oh, that, that Danny was in that camp, you know, because what, what's an upgrade from one camp, you know, was someone else's trash. So it, it was a lot of that, you know, and with 4,000 applications, we could cherry pick probably me, um, you know, and, and do all the easy ones. But we, you know, we, we said from day one, we're, we're going to, we're going to stick to our brand. We got to keep it interesting. We're going to save these because we want to save history too. You know, we want to save those old cabins and you can't put a price. Some of these cabins should be torn down. Actually, a lot of them should be torn down, but you know, you, you sat on that porch with your grandfather for 25 years. You ate lobsters with the family over there. You can't put a price on that, you know? So, and the old grandfather rule too with DP. So it's good. If, you know, if you don't tear it down, you can, you can stay close to the water, but yeah, that dollar amount is the dollar amount that, the homeowner pays and, and we do get you know money for production and stuff and we're able to pass that on okay. so i have two questions uh oh i know right um what do you think the biggest contribution is from your show and you can define who is receiving the contribution and then the second question is what would you what would the younger ryan tell the future right you know what ah. trying to say what were the young you're not gonna believe the, this but yeah um yeah. you know the, the biggest contribution is that the, the, at those reveals and just to see you know the the emotions on, on the people's faces and, and you know I, like i said I, we really love doing those ones where the people had to scrape together you know to say because we let's face it taxes are now pushing people away from the ocean it's been it's a it's a big thing in maine like you know these second homes like not being able to afford the taxes you know and price of everything so when we can help a family you know and and save something like that or save a memory um it's, it's pretty amazing you know and then like i guess i'm so proud of like just Augusta Garden. Never in a million years did I think young people would want to stay there and that there'd be new restaurants and hiking trails everywhere and energy like that. It's, it's, that makes us very proud of, as well. Um, and then what would younger Ryan tell older Ryan? God, uh, we're here in protection. I've always been good about, you know, I always have sunglasses on, so I always want you know, have eye protection, but I, I definitely should have worn hair protection a long time ago. Um, and, you know, just don't give up. And, but believe it, I ne never, I would have bet anything I own that if you told me where I'm going to be on TV for eight years, I never would have believed you. I still don't believe it, I think. Like, if I stop and think about it, it kind of freaks me out. You know, we just, we just go, go, go. I think there'll be a time in our life when we'll look back. But now, I mean, we're working harder than we ever have, you know, because they, they said, you're not, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get rich from TV, you, but doors are going to open. You're going to get opportunities that some people wouldn't have. So that, that's what we got to do. We got to open every door and check it out and see if it's worth going down the hallway. We have a question from Laura on Zoom. How do you imagine the new shop will enhance and change the work you do? Uh, so the new property, uh, we call it the back 40. It has made us so much more efficient. Uh, we, we now have a meeting place and we don't have tools scattered at my house, Chase's house, uh, Manchester. It, it's, it's taken us, to, it took us to the next level between a couple guys and trucks, you know, meeting at a job site. Uh, you know, we have a shop guy, we get deliveries and I'll tell you, having a forklift is really nice as you get older. Uh, and it's funny, you know, it's, you, we went in this in our forties, you know, when you get to your forties, going into your fifties, it's a lot different, you know, like. I never thought about mental health before. And, you know, it's been crazy. Like the last 10 years went by fast. And now it's like, okay, you got to take time for yourself. And having that space has been awesome. You know, that space allowed me to get a, a dog again. And like, that's been so good for me. I'm not thinking about work all the time, you know, and it's, it's good to have our own space. And then now we're pre-building stuff for this winter. Um, we can paint inside and then bring it out. And, you know, we can, we can, Still, we can make progress in the winter, you know, more progress than we used to be able to. So we're not limited now. We have so much space to do stuff like that. And I know that um, in the future, we, we plan on like building furniture and doing cool pieces and art and stuff and, you know, having pop-ups there. So it's going to be fun to see what that does. And, you know, Monmouth has been great and just being a part of another community as well.
Right. You'll notice that you started from the episodes you had trouble with generators. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I noticed a lot of it. Good. Well, yeah. I mean, you watch all these other shows, you know, whether it's one of the fishing shows, you know, they you, as you get more success, you get nicer stuff, but it's more expensive to fix it, too. With so many applications, what's your process for selecting? The oh, that's a good question. A few. Um, yeah, so, so many applications. Uh, and they're all great camps. You know, it, it's logistics. If you watch seasons past, uh, we'll try to do them. Like we'd be going up 27 towards Sugarloaf. You know, maybe there'd be one in Rome and then New Shannon, a couple of Sugarloaf. So we could, Chaser I could leave or Hammond's Lumber could leave, hit them all and then come back. Uh, we went towards Bridgeton for a while. Um, we went down towards Bar Harbor. So we try to get clusters. Um, and Ashley hates it when I say this. The pandemic, as hard as it was on everyone, our show, it, it, it gave it a lot of strength because people were home. And it allowed us to see that there's great TV people on the other side of the camera. So we kept it, we were able to keep doing the show and we were able to do it a, a lot around home. And people all over the world, that they could care less where the cabins are. We know my goal is to fix everyone on Cobbacy Lake, but every mainer I talk to, you better come up to Rooster County, you know? So we do owe it to, you know, our fellow mainers to travel, but um, biggest is logistics, you know, and there's so many, we, we want to do a boathouse and, there's a timber frame fire tower up in um, East Grand Lake I'd love to fix. But just getting us there too, you know, it's hard to work. The further away we work, the more you take out of the budget, you know? So we, we Central Maine, we, we love it. We're going to still go here and there. But logistics, if we can get two or three cabins next to each other, it really helps out. Hi, Susan. Okay, another question from Zoom is uh, something that always strikes me is your positivity. You're always cheering people on. Where does your energy slash positivity come from? <laughs> uh, well, my, 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 part of my parents, you know, and um, I think I was, uh, I think this is funny, but I was probably weighed this much when I was at seven, six great you know i was always just i had to be fun I, I use humor you know and like i wasn't the fastest kid you know i wasn't the best looking kid but i just always had fun you know and some of these days i like i said there's highs and lows in your life and i remember time when like what am i going to do in my life where am i going to be and you know this is a, our story is good for younger kids because this didn't happen until i was 39 you know i didn't marry ashley until i was 39 it was years of my life i'm like you know like what's going to happen to me am i you know never going to have a a family and you're like you never know but you can never give up you know um and i'm like with demo like there's days that really stinks there's days it's wet out nasty out but i've always just put myself it's up here you know like let's just have fun with it i'm gonna get able to take a shower when i get home um you know it's just make the best of it, it so i and i think again i a little bit of like growing up and just, you know, just want, trying to have fun, you know, like, and now with the show, everyone's like, oh, like, you know, we've lost a lot of our anonymity and our privacy. And I, I'm fine with that because because of everything else going on. But I look at it like this, like, what a gift just to talk to someone and make them happy, you know? And the stories we've heard from the TV are just, they're amazing. But, you know, people... But a lot of people struggle. Like, you know, we're lucky to be in Maine and like have these opportunities, but there's people, some people that they, they go to work and that's all they have is that TV, you know, maybe they're in the city and, you know, to, to help someone just put a smile on their face. It, it's, it's amazing. You know, like it's, it's, it really, it's, it's, we've heard stories about, you know, people being in hospice with their parents and bonding over the show. And I mean, half a dozen people that didn't know whether they want to go on in life and, they reached out to us and the show helped them and like just just stuff like that you know just being a good person and you can touch people like it's just it's amazing how powerful tv is i have a question as well um so 
what would you recommend to someone who's looking to get into the types of trades or these types of fields? Like, is there a good starting point? Is it just start picking up tools and messing around, seeing what you can do like safely, of course. Right. Um, Wear your airplanes. You know, <laughs> don't go to Home Depot and rent something you can't handle. But like, what would you recommend to like the younger generation for like how to get started in all of this? Is it finding an apprenticeship? Is it taking a class? What, where would you That's start? That's a great question. I, I, I would say it's never too late. Even if you're retired from the military at 50, you know, it's never too late. You know, um, but for younger kids, there's so many amazing programs. You know, it, it's sad that a lot of technical schools are, are more regional now. But uh, there's, 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 as you know, you can't get enough help in Maine. You know, the the, the housing market. I think we need sixty thousand new houses by 2030. Um, but there's always people looking, and just get started. Like talking about seeing Brad and Schmidt and these guys come up, or Jay, who was a teacher just putting your time in, you know, like get started. Like we've given, we've given so many people an opportunity. Like when I go talk to schools, I was like, I don't care if you have your Harvard degree. I don't care if you got 1600 on your SATs. If you have a positive attitude and a will to work, you're hired, you know, it's, 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 that's, that's what it's about. Okay. We've, we've definitely got some more questions from zoom and if anybody in the room does just raise your hand and let us know. Um, but, uh, Anthony from zoom would like to know, does the crew stay at camps overnight until they're finished? So great question. So w when we do go away, um, production helps us there too, you know, so that's how we, when we're live, when we're up in like Greenville production will rent some VRBOs for us, you know, so rent some houses and uh, we'll, we'll stay there, you know, and then we'll all do family meals and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, we're really the sweet spot is within an hour or so, you know, that we can go back and forth because we're a lot more efficient. Uh, we, you know, we're not from, and they, as the show grew, you know, now we, we can, we, we, we had to travel before. Now we can do a lot around central Maine, but we still want to travel out here and there. And there's a couple of years, I mean, we were in Greenville and we, I had to make the guys go home. They were having so much fun. <laughs> we, uh, the nut camp, we did one camp, but uh, people, you don't know this. It was an old railroad uh, property for the railroads. And there was four or five cabins there and a main house. And they had just bought the property because never in a million years would I say, I say okay, we're going to stay in your house while we do the cabins. You know, but they had no emotional attachment to it. And the house would get done next. So we lived in the house and did four cabins right there, right on, uh, right on Moosehead Lake. It was amazing. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, so, and my, my favorite, uh, who is really in charge, Chase or Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> One of my morals. I can say I always have good morals. Um, geez, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I guess it depends on who you ask them, but you know, they, they are the creative outlet of the show. You know, um, I've gotten more creative though, since being with them, which is awesome. But, um, you know, just the two of them and like their whole fit, that whole moral family is just amazing. Like I said, yeah, like just ours and craftsmen and saving stuff. And I don't know if I told you guys this, but Chase and the, uh, Ashley and Chase White Sarah had a shop in Hollow called the Pollock Shop two, around 2000, before the internet started. And they were literally doing picking before like the American Picker Show around. And they were building barn wood furniture like before that, like, they were ahead of their time, you know, and it's it just back to like the, the way that, that they are. But I, I think if one of them is number one, tell them the boss. You know, if Chase here, he's the boss, if Ash here, he's the boss. Uh. Um, so speaking of bosses and working with family, um, do you ever find it to be, or does anyone ever find it to be challenging on the show to sort of resolve some of the issues when it comes to like, well, that's my wife, that's my brother-in-law, that's my best friend, that's my whoever. How do you sort of work through those? I mean, obviously it's because there's it's times that aren't easy, you know, but 90% of the time it's amazing. You know, you know what it is? Like the 90% of the highs are amazing, but when you hit a low, you hit a low, you know, um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it, it can be challenging. You know, and we have so many different businesses going on now. It's like, I had to step out of the retail part because that's not really my thing. Because, you know, we, five of us were all there and like, we want to be efficient now, you know? So I, I more keep an eye on the wood, the wood shed, but I've even stepped back from that now. Like, uh, one good thing though, is when one of those two are mad at each other, they're not mad at me. So that works out pretty well. <laughs> but, you know, we, 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 we always work through our problems, you know? And like, it can get very emotional. You know, and you can get upset. And 
you know, we all work hard and we are very passionate. And when you have passion like that and family, you know, it, it, it's not always sunny and rainbows and unicorns, <laughs> but it's just getting through it. Like I said, end of the day, you know, that's the biggest thing is, you, you know, getting back together. Okay, we work through it and, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Yes, yeah, so Ashley and I, um, they invited us down there. To, they do a, they did Spring in the Silos event. Um, it was, we were out of our world, out of, you know, it was a little out of our element, but um, they flew us down. And, you know, Chase is pretty quiet, and Ashley's more quiet. Like I said, our strengths and weaknesses, you know, kind of are great. Like, I know it's my, it's my job to sh talk, shake hands, hug, do that thing, you know, so, and Chase's job, he does his thing. But Ashley and I went down there, and it was fun. Um, so it's right when they launched the network, we get to this hotel and it's like uh, Andrew Zimmerman and, and like the Byron guys. And I mean, it was nice saying that, but you know, we're kind of in the corner and then all these other people, they're all, it's just the way it is in the TV, the networking and taking pictures and like, kind of like, and we were just in the corner being us. And like, it was two or three days there and everyone was trying to talk to Chip and Joe. And like, we just sat back and took it all in, you know, like, that's a we we should do more of that networking and social media stuff but we we love being mainers and like we're happy the way like the way it is now we don't want to give up that either you know and like being sheltered is, can be a good thing too so yes we've been there it was fun um i'm happy with manchester west god the main <laughs> it's amazing that the silos are beautiful um and what they've done for that, they've really brought that town back together as well. Yeah. But again, it's just great because I the premise of the Magnolia Network is everyone has a story, you know, and you just talk to so many people that they just have a fascinating life story, you know, and it's neat to see TV get away from some of the crap that used to be on it to more storytellers, you know. And they're, and they're a big part of it. All right. So we have time for one last question. Um, does Kennebec Cabin Company ever do smaller jobs outside of Maine Cabin Masters? And this is from an anonymous person on Zoom. We do. Um, again, we're, bless you, we're so busy. And, you know, we know the, the shows are, it builds our brand, you know. And it's what they were as long as they want episodes, we'll, we'll do more because that builds everything up. But we have been doing, um, we do some small side projects. Uh, one thing I've liked to do that I've been focused on is general contracting. You know, we got a couple of big projects in the works because people want someone they can trust. And, you know, pe so many people want to come to Maine and, you know, we have a great network of people, we have artists and craftsmen. So we're doing an amazing project right now. It's a family compound. It'll be on the show. And it's, you know, it's just like almost being like the coach and keeping everyone in line. And I love it. The chaos, you know, uh, 30, 40 people on the job site. And the, the thing I like about the most, though, is very transparent. You know, when you're starting out in carpentry, you don't want to overcharge someone, but you want to, you, you want to make a living. And I used to hate that. So I always was estimate high and come in low. You know, if you get the job, if you don't get the job, you, you don't want, you know, and that was a struggle, you know, when you're going up and, and now general contract, everything's transparent. You want this, you want that. We add our fee and then you know we make it happen so it's again this and it's a different thing than cabins but building some really cool stuff is, is exciting so you've got there'll be more of that to come to well thank you guys oh one more question what's up with lance lance is happily married loving life in somewhere in litchfield maine i think he has three or four he knew still kids so yeah he's he moves. Remember the yeah, the big birds. Um, has a farm. Yeah, and you know the TV world isn't for everybody. You know, and, that, and that's one thing we notice now. Like, you know, uh, as it gets more popular, like it, you, you can feel tied to it. And like, you know, Lance went his way, and you might see some of us other people go their way here and there. You know, it's like it, it can be a lot. So, but you know, we t talk to him and always welcome back. But you know, it wasn't for him. All <laughs> right. He left his legacy though in a short time. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Ryan. Thank and for everyone you. in the room, Zoom, Facebook. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you.